Why your baby's umbilical cord gas? Why does it matter? Today we are going to tackle umbilical cord gases and why they are important, especially if your baby has suffered a traumatic brain injury at birth. So let's just get to this really quick. So what does umbilical cord gases, what do they tell us? Well, what they can tell is whether there is a possible preceding fetal hypoxic stress event, whether that has taken place. And the decision as to whether to acquire or to get umbilical cord sampling, whether to get the gases, this can vary from hospital to hospital. Usually there will be certain factors that will kick in, which will make a determination as to whether the umbilical cord gases are done. And like I said, they can vary. In a lot of instances, what we will find is that if there was a non-reassuring -reass tracing, gases may be done then. If there was an APGAR score that is six or lower at any time, this could be either the one minute mark, the five minute mark, 10 minute mark, and even, even the, the you know, some instances, a 15 minute mark, there may be umbilical cord sampling done, gas sampling done. And also if the umbilical cord gases are needed, it may be done. Whenever there is a determination as to whether an umbilical cord gas needs to be drawn or done, it needs to be done as soon as possible. So you wanna make sure that there is no type of delay in getting that gas. You wanna do it as soon as you can. Now there can be a lot of, there can be some variation as to the numbers when we are talking about umbilical cord gases. So normally what we will have is there will be a range on the, on the venous side and then you can have a range on the arterial side and in a lot of instances what we when you're dealing with the umbilical cord most of the time you're going to see what we call a three cord vessel you're going to have a three cord vessel in some instances you may have a two cord vessel but when they are doing the sampling they want to make sure they get a sample from a venous they want to get a venous sample and they want to get an arterial sample so normally what you will have in the quote normal range on the venous side you want to see a 7.25, anywhere from 7.25 to about 7.45. That's on the venous side. On the arterial side, which is generally going to be a little bit lower, you're going to see a 7 point round, or the range is going to be about 7.18 to about 7.38. So these, these numbers, when you are are, are going through something like this, your baby has suffered a traumatic brain injury, they have an HIE brain injury, and if there are umbilical cord gases that were done, as a parent, you could actually go back through the medical records and take a look to see specifically what were those numbers, what were the ranges. A lot of times when you look at these numbers and you see them in the medical records, some hospitals will actually have the ranges alongside what the score was. So let's say, for example, if you have a if you have a, uh, a a Venus score that was, let's just say 6.9, well, they'll probably, they may have that 6.9 sample there and they may have the normal range beside it. And that 6.9, it can, in some instances, they will even have flagged it. So I'm talking to you about this today because umbilical cord gases, they are extremely important. And when we are working with families to determine what caused their baby's traumatic brain injury at birth, like an HIE injury, umbilical cord gas is definitely an area that we want to make sure that we investigate to try to get a good idea as to what was going on with the baby during labor and delivery. If you have more questions, maybe you talk, maybe you're watching this video today because your baby has an HIE injury and you have questions as to what caused this. Was this something that medical malpractice caused or was it genetic or was it developmental? If you have these types of questions, what I invite you to do is to go ahead and get your cell and give us a call. There's a telephone number, there's a phone number down below. Go ahead and get your cell and give us a call. Remember, it costs you absolutely nothing to talk with us initially about your baby story and what happened during labor and delivery. When you talk to my office, make sure when you speak to my secretary that you pick a good date and a time to get on our calendar so we can know when to call you back in regards to everything. So make sure you pick a good date and a time. In addition to picking a good date and a time, make sure that you also provide a good email address because from time to time, we will have to send out correspondence through email and we wanna make sure that we're sending it to an email account or address that you frequently check. In addition, 
I practice law here in the state of Maryland, and I know sometimes people will contact my office. They are in the United States, but they're not in Maryland. If that is you, just understand that we have to use what we call co-counsel or local counsel. In other words, a lawyer in your state, and that's something that we can look to work and help you with, but I just want to make sure that you understand that co-counsel or local counsel aspect of things if you are not here in the state of Maryland. All right, that's gonna be it for today's quick educational video. Again, I'm Marcus Boston, and I'm one of the childbirth injury and medical malpractice attorneys practicing law here in the state of Maryland at Boston Law Group, LLC. Talk with you next time. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day.